Okay. Um, so this chapter we're talking about quadrilateral. What is a quadrilateral? Four-sided polygon. Yes. Okay. Today we're talking about some different types of quadrilaterals. Uh, well, yeah, a four-sided shape, usually when you say what's a four-sided shape, people say a square or a rectangle. But not all quadrilaterals are squares or rectangles, right? Okay, if you have, I need to do a couple definitions here. Two sides that are across from each other, you know what they would be called? Parallel. No, they're not parallel. Opposite. Okay, these are opposite sides, these are opposite sides, and these are opposite angles. Okay, you might say, uh, like, the baseball field is opposite our campus, right? Because it's across the road. So opposite means across from. Angle D is opposite angle B. Angle A is opposite angle C. Segment DC, side DC, is opposite segment AB, side AB. Uh, that's opposite. Um, if they're next to each other, like these two sides are next to each other, they're called consecutive. The book calls them consecutive sides. So opposite is when they're across from each other. If they're next to each other, they're called consecutive. So this would be like AB is consecutive side with BC, or AB and AD. A, B, B, C. They're next to each other. They share a vertex. Consecutive is what? Next to each other. Okay. Now, let's get into the family talk here. So, what is this thing I'm drawing? Quadrilateral. Parallelogram. Parallelogram. You guys remember these arrows? I didn't no, say you're wrong. Parallelogram has opposite sides, the quadrilateral with opposite sides parallel. That makes a parallelogram a parallelogram. They can look like a lot of different things, but that's that's usually the standard one we draw. Parallelogram. Um, let's see. You guys know what this is called? Is that a square? No. Rhombus. It's a rhombus. Why is it not a square? It's, it's not made up of completely right angles. Because it's not, yeah, it does not have many degree angles. Rhombus has four equal sides, but, okay, girls, I think I need to give you guys a seating chart. I wasn't talking. Well, it doesn't matter. People at your table are. We're all Okay, um, anyways, what was I talking about? Rhombus, equal sides, not, not equal angles necessarily. Um, okay, what's it called if it does have equal angles? Square square. Just equal angles, not equal sides. Yeah, that does look more rectangle. Wouldn't a square be if it has equal sides and yeah, so rhombus has equal sides, rectangle has equal 90 degree angles, and yeah, if square has both. they got married and had a baby, they would have a square, because square has both this and that. So it has equal sides and equal 90 degree angles, square. Yeah. He wasn't there. Okay, all... So is this a is a rhombus a parallelogram? Are the opposite sides parallel? Like it, yeah. Yes. Is a rectangle a parallelogram? Yes. Yeah. Are the opposite sides parallel? Mm -hmm. Yes. Is a square a parallelogram? Yeah. Yes. yes. So all of these are in the parallelogram family. But this parallelogram is none of these. It doesn't have equal sides, doesn't have equal angles, none of these. But all of these are in the parallelogram family. And a square descends from a rhombus and a rectangle. Okay, and then off by itself, kind of the weird cousin. Capital. 
is trapezoid. Yeah, Mary, Mary Ann's the normal one. If Mary Ann's normal, we're all in trouble. Okay. Trapezoid only has two parallel Two parallel sides. So the parallel sides are, they call them the bases, base one, base two, whatever, bases. And the uh, non-parallel sides are called, guess what? Legs. So whoever invented geometry termino terminology uh, recycled a lot of words, is what I'm saying here. So bases and legs, remember that happens on a right triangle has legs, an isosceles triangle has a base and two legs. Anyways, um, I'm forgetting something. A trapezoid has exactly one pair of parallel sides. They can look like a lot of different, it doesn't have to look like this, it's just kind of a normal one though. Uh, this would be a trapezoid because of those two guys, right? So this would be the base. This would be the base, leg, leg. Okay, okay. Oh, there's one new one, that's what I forgot, that they added this year. Like, I haven't seen this in a book before, although I have used this term a lot. And it's called, they call it a kite. Does that look even to you guys? Let's, does it look like nothing? No. It looks like a kite. Okay, that's, that's good enough. So, on a kite, it has to have two compared, two pairs of consecutive congruent sides. So, in other words, like these two are the same and these two are the same. The opposite sides are not congruent. If the opposite sides were congruent, what would the shape be? It'd be a rhombus. If the opposite sides were congruent, all sides would be congruent. So it would be a rhombus. But it's just got the two sides next to each other are congruent. So they called it a kite. Is a kite a parallelogram? No, it's not. Not parallel, not parallel. It's not a trapezoid either. These aren't, neither side is parallel. Uh, can you go back to the top of the page for one second? This is all in your book if you turn turn it back a page. At the bottom, page 248. So if you ever forget something. And the wrong page is not... Uh, the wrong page is on the board. You can look in the book. Alright. What do you use? All right, what else we got to know? We've got, what do the angles of a quadrilateral add up to? So what is, what did the angles of a triangle add up to? So what do the angles of a quadrilateral add up to? 360. You can tell on a rectangle it's 360 because basically it's 90 times, 90 times four. But any quadrilateral, they add up to 360 every time. And you may get want to guess what a pentagon's angles would add up to? Uh, ugly. Five. No. No. Okay. Um, Do you guys know that the number of sides in a polygon is the same as the number of angles, right? It's got five sides, five angles. Um, five. No. Five forty. Did you find it in your book? Yes. I'll well, I was just trying to add what one Where is it at the book? Page 281. I think it was. Oh, yeah. So you just like add 180 each time? Yes. Okay. So it goes up by 180, yes. So here's the pattern. Here's the formula, though. To find the number, the, what the sum of the interior angles add up to, use this formula. Would the n be the number of sides? N would be the number of sides, which is the same as the thing as the number of angles. So like on a triangle, it has three sides, right? So if you plug in three, you get three minus two is one, times 180 is 180. 
So for a pentagon, you plug in 5. 5 minus 2 is 3, times 180 is 540. What about the nonagon? Nonagon is 9, so you do 9 minus 2 times 180, whatever that is. 7 times 180. Okay. Um, <clears throat> so that's for finding all the angles on the inside. 1,260. Okay. If you extend the sides of a polygon, you create exterior angles, right? We talked about exterior angles on triangles. Mm -hmm. It turns out whenever you, uh, which one did I miss? The one. All right. Uh, whenever you add all of a shapes, all of a polygon's exterior angles together, they always come up as 360, no matter what the shape is. So this is to find the interior angle sum, but for the exterior angle sum, it's always 360, no matter what. So notice I'm not extending both lines, I'm just extending one line. Is that because it can probably fit inside a circle no matter what shape it is? I mean, no. not shape, no matter like, no, I don't, I'm not sure how you prove that, actually. That, there's a proof for it, I'm sure, but I don't know what it is. Um, okay. All right. Did I forget something? No, that was it. Okay. You guys ready? 2, 2, 2, 2, 52. 1, 2, 26. Okay, number one says use a quadrilateral to identify the following. Two sets of opposite sides in quadrilateral PQRS. You guys see the picture of PQRS? PQ and SR. Right. PQ and SR, and they are what kind of things? Line segments. Line segments. So put segment PQ and segment P, uh, QR. Segment PQ and segment SR. That's one pair. So we need the other pair. What's the other pair of opposite sides? PS and QR. Number three says two sets of consecutive angles in quadrilateral HIJK. HIJK, if you look at it, you can tell it's a trapezoid, right? But what would be one set of consecutive angles in that trapezoid? Angle A and angle I. No, those are opposite. Consecutive no. means like in order. Okay, those are sides. We need two. Angle K, angle H. Yeah, that would be an example. Uh, there's a lot of possible answers for this, but... Um, we need two pairs, as I said, like two sets. Well, we'll pair J, yeah. So what's number one, J and I? Okay, number five, the bases and the legs in quadrilateral HIJK. So in the trapezoid, which sides are the bases? You guys remember from earlier? Or did you all zone out collectively? KJ is the base. Yeah, the parallel sides were the bases. So KJ and HI are the bases, and then that means the legs are the other two. So what are, what are the legs? KH and JI. KH and JI. Guys, a little hint for you. If you're just copying the answers down, you're probably not learning anything. You need to be able to listen and process what we're talking about. Okay. Number seven says, list any classifications that describe each quadrilateral. Then underline the most specific classification if more than one description applies. So it's kind of like matching. There's more than one answer in a lot of these. Number seven, you guys see the picture on seven? Mm -hmm. Is it A, a kite? 
No. No. Is it B, a parallelogram? No. Yes. Okay. The opposite sides are parallel, right? So put D down for one of them. Is it C, a rectangle? No. Okay, remember, what was the definition of a rectangle? Equal 90 degree angles. So does seven have equal 90 degree angles? Yeah, remember a square was a type of rectangle. So C is one of the answers. Is it D, a rhombus? Yes, because it has all equal sides. So D. Is it E a square? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Is it F a trapezoid? No. Okay. Which of those, B, C, D, or E, is the most accurate description? Square. It's not just a rhombus because it doesn't have just equal sides. It also has equal angles. So square is a better answer. Okay, number nine, is that A, a kite? No. Kites don't have congruent sides. B, not all four sides anyway. Is it a parallelogram? Yes. So B, a parallelogram. C, is it a rectangle? No. No. D, is it a rhombus? Yes. Yes. E, is it a square? No. no. F, is it a trapezoid? Mm. No. Trapezoid means one pair of parallel sides. So if it is a trap, exactly one pair. So if it is a trapezoid, it can't be a parallelogram or vice versa. So a trapezoid has to have exactly one pair. Yes. Yeah, they changed that definition from last year, from the book they had last year though. Last year it was at least one pair of parallel sides. Now it's exactly one pair of parallel sides. Which is better? Okay, uh, which is a better definition, a parallelogram or a rhombus? Rhombus. So you're supposed to underline D. Number 11, is that A, a kite? No. No, it's close. It's not really anything. It's a little bit lopsided, so a kite should have congruent consecutive sides, and then it doesn't. Uh, is it B a parallelogram? No. C a rectangle? No. D a rhombus? No. E a square? No. F a trapezoid? No. Okay, no. Trapezoid has to have a pair of parallel sides. None. Yeah, they didn't, that's a trick question because they didn't mention none was an option. But yeah, none is the answer. 13, it's just a quadrilateral. Is it A, a kite? No. Is it B, a parallelogram? Yes. Both pairs of opposite sides are parallel? No. Is it C, a rectangle? Is it D, a rhombus? No. All four sides are not congruent. Is it E, a square? Is it F, a trapezoid? Yes. Okay, number 15. Find the sum of the measures of the interior angles in each convex polygon. All this stuff that we talked about, by the way, only works in convex. You know what the opposite of convex is? Concave. concave. So if we had a concave shape, that was kind of weird, but uh, like the rules for that angles don't work for it because that would be an angle and it just screws it up. Okay, so anyway, this only works for kind of normalish uh, polygons. So, how do I find the sum of the angles, the interior angles of a decagon? Subtract two from the Yes, decagon. it would. Then you yes, need you need to have this memorized by the time we take tests, which will probably be like two weeks from Friday. Because we're, you know, Thanksgiving break. Yeah. 1,440. Okay, so you do a decagon. You guys remember how many sides a decagon has? Ten. ten, like decade is ten years. So you did ten minus two, which is eight. Eight times 180 is 14. That's a good time for a calculator. 1440. We haven't needed a calculator much this year, but sometimes it comes in handy. Okay, numbers... Oh, 
Yeah, I don't know what that was. That was actually 15 or 17. Okay, find the, yeah, that's funny. Find the measure of an interior angle of each regular polygon. What's a regular polygon? No. No. Polygon, a regular, polygon just means straight edges, like decagons, octagons. Regular means it has all the same sides and all the same angles. So they're kind of like an equilateral triangle. But kind of like an equilateral triangle would be a regular triangle, yes. So it's like a perfect octagon or a perfect. Okay, so for this one, then would we divide the answer by the number of sides? Okay, yes. So that formula that we just used gives us all the angles in a shape. So 1440 is what all the angles in the decagon should add up to. But what if I wanted just one angle in the decagon? Divide by 10 because this is basically 10 angles. So, if you want just one of the angles, you should buy, divide the angle sum by the number of angles, which is the same thing as the number of sides. Does that make sense? So, on uh, 17, it says dodecagon. What's, do you remember what a dodecagon was? 12. 12. So, I'm going to do 12 minus 2, which is 10. 10 times 180 is 1,800, right? Okay, that would be all of the angles of a decagon added together, but I only want one angle of a decagon, so I'm going to divide the sum of all of the angles by what? 150. By 12. Like an insult. Like complimenting you, but it's an insult. You're, you sounded like you were shocked that she got rid. She did not sound very genuine. Why are you using my calculator? Okay, 19. Well, okay, on 18, you guys remember what the sum of exterior angles is? 360. Okay, 19 says state another name for the polygon. An equilateral parallelogram. Uh, Okay, a square would be equilateral oh, and equal angular. Parallel. That's a parallelogram. What's in? What does equilateral mean? Remember that from all triangles. The all the sides are equal. So, what's a parallelogram with all equal sides called? Rhombus. Rhombus. Why is it not a square? Because the sides are equal. Because we do not know whether the angles are equal or not. We don't know if the angles are ninety. Just the sides. Are we getting? Yeah. Well, you know what a square and a rectangle are, right? Yeah. I get them. I get them. <laughs> okay, then rectangle you're in for a bumpy ride right in that case. Okay, yeah. You need to know rectangles have 90 degree angles. You need to know rhombuses have equal sides. You need to know square has both. You need to know parallelogram means opposite sides well, of parallel. Yeah, you need to know all that stuff. I know this one. Uh, what's a regular quadrilateral? This is a square. Square. Because they have all equal sides. All equal sides, all equal angles. Hey, you know when people say B or B squares? I know why. Because you're not around. <laughs> Hold me back, you guys. <laughs> so I'm not sure that one worked. <laughs> Oh, uh, yeah, so <laughs> Oh, yeah, yeah, it does work. I take that back. If any of you got something, it worked on another level. I was thinking of it mathematically. Okay, 23. Use the slope formula to show that ABCD is not a rectangle. Okay, slope. Formula. Actually, we don't really need the slope formula. We can just look at get the slope off the picture. Um, so, 
We're supposed to show that picture is not a rectangle. What do we know is true about a rectangle? I know um, that it is equal angle, equal 90 degree angle. 90 degree angle. But not equal sides. Well, actually, yeah. technically, a square is also a rectangle. <laughs> okay. Um, so it could have 90, it could have equal sides or not. But okay. If that picture were a rectangle, those sides should be 90 degrees, should be perpendicular. You guys remember what we know about perpendicular slopes? Yeah. No. Okay. So, what, how about parallel lines? What should their slopes be? Zero. The same. The same. If you have two lines with the same slope, or this, they're parallel. If you have two parallel lines that have the same slope. Um, so, for example, like if the slope of one line was two thirds, a parallel line would be two thirds. So we know A, B, and E, C are parallel. Though. But for perpendicular, if the slope of one line was two thirds, the perpendicular line slope would be negative three over two. Okay, so if we can show that two of those lines are not perpendicular, and we know it's not a parallelogram. Well, we know. Um, okay, so let's find the slope of like AD and DC. So, how do we find the slope of AD? Rise over run. Rise over run. Rise is 5 over 2. If I goes to the left, so that'd be negative 2. Okay, so rise over run. So, if on A, it looks like it's at negative 4, through, no, negative 4, 2. Right there. Oh. Never mind, right there. And then the other negative one looks four. like it's at negative two, negative two, right there. So the slope of that line is rise over run. How much is it rising? Uh, I think I counted wrong. Yeah, it's up three, not two. Oh, yeah, you're right. There we go. Now the picture is healed. Hey, I'm getting warm all of a sudden. I'm getting warm in here. Open the vent. It's not blowing anything. If it was blowing something, it would probably be hotter. Okay. Yeah. Except for, I wouldn't call this a 5. I would call it a negative 5. Because my rise, I'm thinking of this from left to right. My rise is going down 5. My run is, what's the run? 2. two. So the slope is rise over run, so it's negative 5 over 2. Okay, what is the slope of DC? Let's try that one. So how much is DC rising? How much is DC rising? 1. How much is DC running? 4. So what's the slope of DC? DC slope is one fourth. Are these two opposite reciprocals? No. no. So we're going to say um, not perpendicular slopes uh, not a rectangle. This under twenty three. Yeah. So twenty-two like is probably use the same thing because it has to have perpendicular slopes too, right? What? So in twenty-two we can probably use the same. No, no, no. Twenty-two says use the distance formula to show that ABCD is not a square. Yeah. So you use the distance. But I'm saying since uh, you got to use the distance the formula, it is not a square. If it's not a rectangle, it's not a square. But we have to use the distance formula to prove it. Twenty-two. It says use the distance formula to prove it's not a square. So, how would we prove it's not a square? 
using the distance uh, formula. Actually, this square has equal sides. Square has to have equal sides. So if we can show two of the sides are not equal, any two sides, then it's not a square, right? What's the distance formula? E equals square root of... Yeah, some, some people found it already. It's right there. Distance equals square root of x minus x squared plus y minus y squared. It's kind of a made up of the Pythagorean theorem, basically. So, you have to find the length of two sides and show that they're not equal. And then say it's, so it's not a square. Okay. For 24, it says use the slope formula, use the slope formula to show that ABCD is not a parallelogram. How do I prove it's not a parallelogram? Um, it's if two of the sides, sides aren't parallel. parallel. Right. Prove that at least one pair of opposite sides is not parallel. How do I do that with slope? On slopes, uh, parallel lines should have the same slope. You can kind of use the slope from side AD. We found that like three minutes ago and compare it to like the slope of BC. Or you could find the slope of AB and compare it to the slope of DC. DC we found on the last problem also, 23. On 23 we found the slope of AD and DC. So that can, that's like half your work right there. Okay, we will practice using the distance formula on 24. Is that what you're asking? You were asking on 23? Are you asking on 20, or 24, I mean? Yeah. Okay, on 25, it says show that ABCD is not a kite. A kite has to have consecutive sides that are completely congruent. Two pairs of consecutive sides that are completely congruent. This one would be harder to prove. Basically, the only way you could prove it is to show that there's not two pairs of congruent sides. Two pairs. You have to show there's not two pairs of congruent consecutive sides. Yeah, that's kind of hard to do. So we'd have to find the length of all of them. I'm going to cheat a little bit on this one for time's sake because this takes forever. But you can kind of use part of this answer on 22, so this kind of saves you some work. Um, so I'm going to show that like AB and uh, BC are not the same or something like that. Okay, how do I find the length of AB? Use the slope or use the distance formula, right? The distance from A to B use the distance formula. What are the coordinates of A? Looks like negative 4, 3, and the coordinates of B are 1, 4. <coughs> okay, how do I find the distance? I do x minus x squared, so negative 4 minus 1 squared plus y minus y squared, and squared all that. Negative 4 minus 1 is negative 5 squared, 20, positive 25. 3 minus 4 is negative 1, squared is positive 1. 25 plus 1, so that'll be the square root of 26. Does that simplify? No, it doesn't. Okay, BC, so I need to say what, where, where's B at, or C at? C is at 2, negative 1. So to find the length of BC, I'm going to do it's x minus x and y minus y stuff. Kind of need that to go up. There we go. 2 minus 1 for the x's. And negative 1 minus 4. Why are you crying? There's no crying in math class. No crying. What is the 
last time you cried, Mr. No crying in baseball. When was the last time you cried, Mr. Jordan? That's a weird question to ask. Um, <laughs> let's see, when was the last time I saw you? Oh! <laughs> oh! 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 square root of 26. So, so far, they are. they are congruent. So it could be a kite, but what's the problem? I don't know. The bottom two are not congruent. So if I was doing this correctly, I'd have to show that the bottom two are not the same. Uh, like, I'd have to show AD and DC are not the same length. Uh, but that's going to take a long time. So I'm just going to say, but AD is not equal to DC. Therefore, you guys remember the therefore symbol? Yeah. Not a uh, kite. Okay, 26, you got to find, a, I'm doing that, you got to find the X's and the Y's. It's not a trick question though, unless you don't know algebra and then I guess it's kind of tricky, but they're not trying to fool you, it's just the kite means the left two are the same and the right two are the same, so you just set them equal to each other and solve for X, solve for Y. Okay. I want you guys to go, go, go. Got 11 minutes.